someday. In the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, April the 6th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. It looks like we're in for an active weather pattern. The uh, sky cams this morning indicating that we do have a good deal of rain over the area. But let's start out at Decatur where there was at least enough breaks for a nice sunrise shot. We get down to Inverness and the roads are wet there where the rainfall has been relatively light. And we get down to Gulf Shores and it's just foggy down there. And uh, some spots across the southern part of Alabama, especially at the observing site at Montgomery, have already reported an inch of rain. Culprit is a warm front that lies across the Gulf Coast. That warm front had come through here yesterday as a cold front and brought about, oh, a half inch rain for most locations. Unfortunately, that saturated the ground. The result is that we're going to see the possibility of heavy rains over the next 36 hours and a flash flood watch is in effect through about uh, uh, early afternoon on Monday. In the upper atmosphere, we have a trough that is over New Mexico and West Texas. Unfortunately, that is peeling out a, a couple of little short waves that are coming across the flow and helping to enhance showers and thunderstorm development across the southeastern U.S. The trough will be slow to come out of the southwest and will actually come out more or less in two pieces. We'll talk about that in just a minute when we get to the GFS. Temperatures across central Alabama generally in the 50s this morning, uh, although across the Tennessee River Valley, they're in the 40s. But if you notice down along the coast, they're in the upper 60s at some locations down there. So definitely a warm front lying across the Gulf Coast and that warm front helping to generate a good deal of overrunning precipitation stretching all the way from central Georgia across central Alabama, central Mississippi into northern Louisiana and actually into north central Texas. Because of the overrunning and because of the low coming out of the Gulf and all the moisture, uh, we'll see flash flood watches in effect from uh, areas uh, all the way from north Georgia all the way down to east Texas, including just about all of the state of Alabama. Rainfall could be heavy at times, and uh, we're looking at a five-day rain total. Most of that coming um, to today, tonight, and into Monday, but no another little round of some lighter rain on uh, Tuesday. So it looks like uh, we're going to have a significant uh, flood threat and then uh, there'll be flash flood threat because of the heavy rain and then we'll also have a, a flooding threat long term in terms of rivers and streams because of all the rain running off. Q, uh, the Storm Prediction Center outlooking a slight risk for severe storms uh, encompassing much of the central Gulf Coast and extending up into north central Alabama and extreme northeastern Mississippi. Day two that slight risk area moves over into uh, primarily central and southeast Georgia and uh, north Florida and the eastern portion of the Carolinas. All right, let's get to the 06Z GFS model run this morning. And uh, here's the uh, forecast map for today, the surface map. And you can see the warm front uh, generally along the Gulf Coast as that warm front's beginning to lift a little bit to the north. We see the trough over West Texas primarily, but you'll see little little pieces of it coming across the southeastern U.S., little short waves that are helping to enhance some of this rain. So it's not like it's going to rain the entire day. We'll probably see an end to the rain for a while, but then the rain will pick up again. By Monday at 1 a.m., so this is tonight, uh, we see the uh, surface low in the uh, Mississippi Delta region, and we see that warm front coming up into north-central Alabama. And uh, we, of course, we see the cold front back to the west. On Monday at uh, midday, we see the surface low has deepened quite a bit and is now over southern Indiana. So uh, in the upper atmosphere, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're seeing two pieces of this trough come out. We see the major trough hanging back over Texas, but one significant short wave is moving out across western Kentucky and southern Indiana. And then a second wave is coming into the bottom of the trough, so that's why the weather is not going to clear out. All right, let's look at some parameters. Here is the uh, precipitable water. We are dealing with a uh, flood and flash flood threat. We can see this is at... Uh, 
1 a.m. Monday, and we can see the values over one and a half inches approaching two. We see that those values stay very high through uh, sunrise on uh, Monday. And then by midday on Monday, we see that the precipitable waters begin, values begin to fall down uh, as the rain threat moves on. We do have a good deal of instability. It's not a tremendous amount of instability, but we have a good instability uh, with CAPE values that are, uh, you know, in the uh, 500 to 750 range. And that uh, that is at uh, 1 a.m. Monday, and this is at uh, about 7 a.m. And so the, the values stay up there, and then we finally uh, begin to see them uh, peak and begin to fall on uh, by uh, 1 p.m. Looking at uh, something that we're really concerned about, and that is shear. The shear values are up there pretty well. Looking at the uh, bulk shear values from surface to 700 millibars, we see the values are pretty high along the warm front. Uh, and we also see that uh, by 7 a.m. on Monday, the values are still way up there on the order of uh, 40 to 50 in the bulk shear values. And then uh, we begin to see them come down as we get into midday on Monday. Now, one of the biggest threats will be that of damaging straight line winds. So here's a look at the 925 millibar wind flow. And here's the thing that we've got, uh, this is uh, 1 a.m. on Monday, and we have that purple area, which indicates uh, wind speeds of 45 to 50 knots. So that means that we're on the verge of severe weather criteria right there. So if anything is be, uh, is able to bring that wind down to the ground, we're going to have damaging wind. And that's probably one of the biggest threats, that and the flooding or flash flooding. But we also have an isolated uh, tornado threat because of the shear that's uh, available there. We see that by the first thing uh, Monday morning by 7 a.m., that we've uh, peaked over 50 knots in the 50 to 55 range, and then we see that uh, values begin to come down by midday. So the severe weather threat is very real. I would expect to see at least severe thunderstorm watches and perhaps tornado watches. The overall trough finally begins to come by um, Tuesday, and uh, as you might expect, that's going to usher in some colder air. We see that uh, on Tuesday, the pattern very chilly with the 540 line coming down into southern Arkansas and northern uh, Louisiana. But we also see the uh, rain area. So the clouds are going to stick around. And we're going to see rain and showers. No thunderstorms, but I think at least rain and showers. The trough finally edges off the southeast U.S. coast on Wednesday, so that should be a very improving day. But Wednesday and Thursday morning are going to be somewhat chilly, and there's a possibility we might even see some patchy frost on Wednesday and Thursday morning as temperatures dip down into the upper 30s primarily, but even with that, we could see some patchy frost. The pattern flattens somewhat as we see a ridge more or less build in that is keeping the traveling weather systems to our no north on Thursday. Uh, we see that same pattern on Friday, but now we're beginning to see the next system come in Southern California. So it looks like while we have uh, one front approaching from the north, it's not likely to get here because of the ridge to the south and, and the more or less zonal flow pattern. By Saturday, uh, we see the ridge pump up in response to the trough coming in from Southern California. And so that should uh, open up the moisture as the Gulf opens up across the lower Mississippi River Valley in the East Texas area. Um, and then by Sunday, we see the, the trough doing sort of what this trough is doing, and that is we see a combination of uh, a little short wave that's over the, in the vicinity of the Arklatex, but we see another substantial short wave back over the northern Rockies. So this is not going to be one of those that comes by quickly. The Gulf opened up very, has opened up very nicely. So we have a good deal of moisture streaming up into the central parts of the United States. And uh, so I think Sunday will be dry, but uh, we'll have to be watching for the timing on this. Uh, I expect most of the rain threat to come late Sunday and into Monday. Going out into voodoo country, that significant trough does develop and come across the southeastern U.S. as a fairly deep trough around the 15th. So that looks like another wet system for Monday the 14th and uh, maybe Tuesday the 15th and poss the possibility of severe weather once again. But after all, it is April. We get out to further in the uh, field. We get out to around uh, the 19th of April and another system shaping up coming out of the southern Rockies and that system moves across the area on the 21st. So the pattern staying very active in voodoo. Well, thanks for tuning into the Weather Extreme video. I expect uh, James Spann to be back 
with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for weather updates on the overall developing weather situation. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day. Stay dry and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of Central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.